Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Uh, today I wanted to show you another video. This is Nod specific on a round ram J head, but this might be relevant to what you do. Um, I've got the mill now to, uh, where are we? It's about a thousandths. Yeah, let's just try that one more time. Excuse the back of my head. I don't want to add any parallax error into this, so. One more time. Yeah, so we've got exactly a thousandths. difference over the nine inch table. Um, that's pretty frustrating. Now what I wound up having to do on this machine actually is take a machinist jack under the front of the head and take the nod out that way. Um, it's really difficult to do. You have to put the jack in the exact right location um, or else you can't check nod and I can get it perfect with the jack on there or you know within half a thou but it's just getting it really perfect dead nuts uh, is very difficult because you're basically dealing with six bolts and you know you've got this you're fighting with and you've got four bolts holding the head on so inside each of these nut pockets here there's a bolt so i've got to tighten and loosen those four bolts in sort of a guesstimation way of tramming and that's actually really difficult just because um well, quite frankly, it's hard to reach. You can't see the indicator. I don't have a helper. So it's a lot of guess and check. I, I, I think once you're within a thousandths on tram for these, that's pretty good. I mean, I started with three thou difference. Um, considering the way you have to do your tram, that's not really very bad. Uh, I think what we'll do is drop the table down and see what we look like with the quill all the way out. Where I guess, I don't really, I always struggle with this. I think it's a good conversation to have is, does a Bridgeport mill have a quill or does it have a spindle? Now, I kind of go both ways. Um, you do have a much heavier duty bearing pack than you do in a drill press. But by the nature of having a quill, yeah, we're start, starting to hit the camera, so. Um, you, you do lose a lot of rigidity stuck out like this, so I don't like to work out here, except when I'm drilling. And here's the crazy thing. With the quill all the way out, we're actually trammed within half a thou. Um, so that tells me the quill isn't coming all the way out square anymore. Yeah, negative one half thou. Uh, yeah, and we're kind of, we're, we're within the resolution on the indicator I'm using. So yeah, that, that's actually another thing is we've got wear in the quill now. Um, this is no longer moving up and down perfectly perpendicular to the head. That's not unheard of or frankly unexpected given the age of the machine. Um, so that's a little frustrating. That makes it harder to drill square. Now what do we do? Uh, in this case, I'm just going to say live with it. Uh, if I'm doing tool room 10,000 7-inch tolerances, I would have to buy a new machine. 
I work in one to three thousandths tolerances on the tight end um, on a lot of stuff. Frankly, it's layout lines and send it tolerances. Uh, so do I need to be more precise? No, not really. I think this is still a plenty tight machine. The big source of error on this machine is the vice. But that does explain why I've been having some issues with my larger cutters. This isn't something I've checked because there's no adjustment. I don't check it regularly unless I move the head around. Now, since I haven't moved the head in quite a while, I haven't checked it since then. But let this be a lesson to you. Check your machines. Don't count on it. Even though there's technically no adjustment, things can still kind of wiggle and settle. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope I didn't bore you too much. And I hope you learned something with me today.